So I like it, you know, when uh, saints are, you know, in tune. And uh, I like it too, you know, also when um, I find it that um, a lot of times it's even after communion. And it's a time of uh, people examining themselves and the time that, you know, we all, you know, hey, get our hearts in tune with the Lord. And uh, there's sweeter fellowship. I don't know if you, you all noticed that, but I have. And uh, greater joy. And that's, a, you know, a blessing. And uh, these are some of the characteristics David was bringing out here. Uh, is, uh, and I think it can be, it can be uh, in the inside of a local church too. It's a convicting psalm. It will, con uh, I believe, the word of God will convict and look to ourselves and examine. But verse one is a lot of material. But uh, David says, "Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Who shall abide in thy tabernacle?" Of course, we know the tabernacle in the Old Testament. Was, uh, was a place that God had Moses build and so forth and raised up so that the children of Israel could bring their sacrifices and so forth. But it was a place that they could get their hearts right with God, bring their sacrifices. And of course, it looked to Christ. It was, a, it was, it was built for the journey. It was a rough, it was the, uh, uh, what can I say, a, a building that was, that was made for the journey. In the wilderness, and uh, you know, if you remember, uh, Pastor Logan was talking about uh, Stephen. Stephen called what Israel the what church in the wilderness? The church in the wilderness. It's kind, of, it's kind of interesting. But who shall abide, to dwell in, to rest in, to be firmly planted in, permanently unmovable? Wow, think of that. Well, it's just like David. We or not David, but Daniel. Well, like Daniel, we have uh, we all have to what purpose in our hearts that we're going. You know, uh, they used to call it in the old days stick. Uh, some preachers call it sticktivity, <laughs> and uh, it's a constant fight. And uh, the devil's against a church that wants to uh, preach uh, the word of God. And stand upon God's word. It was a uh, some preachers use a militant, militant, not in the respects of of weapons and so on. Our weapons of warfare are not carnal. The Bible says, but mighty through God, the pulling down of strongholds. And that's prayer, Bible reading, witnessing, going to church. And so, Lord, who shall abide in Thy tabernacle? It's not for everyone. There's many that come into church. And leave come and go they come and go what's the Bible say the Lord said except you be born again you cannot enter the kingdom of God you must be born again you must have trusted Christ as your personal Savior believe in him he that believeth in me though is dead yet shall he live the Lord said he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life but he that believeth not the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God abideth on him John chapter 3 it's for the saints who shall abide in thy tabernacle who shall dwell in thy holy hill one is being born again many as I said come and go he uh, have a pastor is talking about faith they have that they have not that that faith and our hope and, and Christians, our attitude and our uh, hope is that people will come to Christ. People would re repent. The Bible says testifying both to the Jews and the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, glory to God. Faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance toward God. Lord, I am a sinner. I'm no good. You look to Christ. Faith in him. And then God does the changing. God does the changing in the heart. God does the work in that person's life. Who should dwell in thy holy hill? The mountain on which Solomon built the temple. It's a, it, is a, it is, you know, in Israel, it is a holy place. It is a holy place. 
the uh, uh, place that the thrice, the Bible talks about the God of the thrice holy God. And that's one of the things that people don't realize, you know, how holy God is and how wretched we are. You know, people don't realize that. That's why they need a savior. Some people don't like to be called sinners. <laughs> well, good news for you, the Bible says, for all of sin comes short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. That's the point you gotta, the fear of the Lord begin, is beginning wisdom, the Bible says. It's a holy place to come to God. A place of exceeding joy, gladness, and praise to Almighty God of heaven and earth, the mighty God of Israel, the only and true and righteous God. Ten Commandments is on last night. Anybody see it? <laughs> they had some things wrong, but they had the Ten Commandments on. I was kind of shocked they even had even showing it. Of course, it goes along with this uh, holiday of Easter and so forth. But um, the place of the church, triumphant, eternal bliss for the saints of God. You know that. As I said, I like it as, you know, after communion, a time of sweet f uh, fellowship and joy. Amen. Believe in the, lo uh, the local church today can resemble this. Militant, triumphant, rejoicing, yet in a fight, contending for the faith. In a pilgrim journey, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle, the saints, the saints the born again hallelujah thank the lord who shall dwell in the thy who shall dwell on thy holy hill the saints the privileges of the saint the characteristics of a saint verse 2 says he that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart he that walketh uprightly, he only trusts in the righteousness and the salvation of Christ alone for salvation. He trusts in the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world only. He worketh righteousness. His day-to-day -day endeavors stands in the will of God, working and doing what is good pleasing and right in the sight of Almighty God and to those that are around him. He worketh, he walketh uprightly. He has his faults, yet he confesses them. But he does not live in them day to day. He hates the the the, even himself the sickness the weakness and the sins of his own and the shortcomings of his own life he worketh righteousness what's right true honest he is conscious consciously honest he's true this is a tip uh, of a saint just and fair and faithful with all to whom he has to do. One that all, one that all see, uh, one that all around him sees that he is an upright person and worketh righteousness. Think of that. He walketh uprightly. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle, who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly ones that are around him he has a testimony of being true and honest and fair and just doing right yeah. boy we have an altar call right now <laughs> oh oh me oh my you know that's just the first one he work he walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh truth in his heart he worketh righteousness Speak his truth in his heart. He's true to himself. Psalms 1 2. But his delight is in the law. The Lord in his law doth he meditate day and night. That's what he's concentrated on his thoughts upon, upon God's word. He delights in the law of the Lord. 
and a law that he meditate day and night. He loves the word of God. He gets the joy out of reading, studying God's word. His prayers, his profession, his promises to God and to men come not out of a feigned lips, unsincere lips, but are true and are good. Endeavoring always to speak the truth. Because the Bible says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Endeavoring always to speak the truth in his heart. And if it's in the heart, it'll come out of the mouth. Goes right along with walking uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaking truth in his heart. His condition before Almighty God, constant. Well, the Bible says, pray without ceasing, ceasing, or ceasing. <laughs> I got the old joke. But uh, praying continuously, meditating upon the word of God, speaking truth in his heart, walking uprightly, working righteousness, being consciously honest and faithful and true, upright, endeavoring always to speak the truth. Verse 15 and verse, or excuse me, verse, uh, chapter 15, verse 3. He that biteth, he that backbiteth not with his tongue. Notice uh, Ephesians 4. Ephesians chapter 4. I think Pastor Logan even brought these verses out. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, verse 30, uh, Ephesians 4, 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed in the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Yes, what a great place of unity. What a great place to be. When one another are true hearted. Saints that are working righteousness, walking uprightly, speaking truth in their hearts, and backbiteth not with his tongue. The Bible says it talks about the tongue in James chapter 3, world of iniquity. And the Bible says, too, in that very passage in James, you know, that you can tell what's of God and what's not. Because it gives you some, uh, it gives us, the God tells us what the, what the wisdom is from above, what the wisdom is from beneath. The Lord says, says this, uh, but if you have bitter and envying strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. Only by pride, the Bible says, what cometh? Contention. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Where there is envy, where for where envying and strife is, is a confused mess. But the wisdom that is from above is what? First pure. Yes, glory to God. Then peaceable. It's easy. It goes along gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness sown in peace of them that make peace. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the saints. Endeavoring. To be right, to be just, to walk uprightly, and backbiteth not with his tongue. He that backbiteth not with his tongue. Speaking evil of what the Bible says of no man. Of no man. And that doesn't, I don't believe uh, you go so far as that, you know, that... Uh, you can't because the Bible teaches to mark preachers or teachers, you know, whatever. Romans chapter 16, is it? 
uh, that causes division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. You know, those, they, they, they go in the group of the wicked, I believe. And we'll see that, we'll see that David says something about this, even in this chapter here. Uh, 15 verse 3, nor doeth evil to his neighbor. Nor doth evil to his neighbor. He wants the best for his neighbor. For everyone. He wants everyone to come to Christ. Repent. Trust Christ as your personal savior. He wants saints to get along. He wants saints to uh, be uh, right with one another. In unity. A place of joy. A place of praise. The almighty God glorifying Christ. What a, what a blessing. A local church is like that. He hates and scorns the gains of injustice and fraud. He doth, he doth, nor doth evil to his neighbor. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Being true. Having unfeigned love of the brethren, the Bible says. Unfeigned love of the brethren. Wow. What a joy. He considers and thinks that one who wrongs his neighbor proves to injure himself the more in the end. Think of that. Someone that is just out to uh, or even thinks evil of his neighbor, his fellow man, or even, uh, you know, that if he was to do evil, it comes right back on him. That goes along with a verse. I think uh, Proverbs, we read it not too, uh, oh, several months ago. I always thought it's a great verse. Um, he that rolleth a stone is the symbol of burning lips wicked heart and like a posture covered with silver dross he that hateth the symbols with his lips and layeth up the seat within him when he speaketh fair believe him not there is an abomination in his heart whose hatred is covered by deceit his wickedness shall be showed before the whole congregation who diggeth a pit Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and, and he that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. Oh, sorry about that. Proverbs 26, verse 24 through 28. Sorry about that. So he, the saint considers, hey, if I do wrong to someone else, it's going to come back. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. A lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. Watch out. So the saint doth know he doth not evil to his neighbor. He wants the best for everyone. He backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor taketh up a reproach, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. He considers the neighbor's reputation. The saint considers those, in, you know, others, other brethren and so forth, considers their reputation. He thinks of the best. He wants uh, everyone to think the best of the other one. He constrives to do good to all. Careful not to do harm to any, to speak evil of no man. Considerate of his neighbor, neighbor's reputation. Matthew 7, 12 says, Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Was that the, the what do they call the golden rule? So you want to, so the saint treats others as he would want to be treated. He does not take up the faults of others in his conversation. 
He does not take the faults of others or the misgivings uh, and the shortcomings of others as something to make glee of. But rather he hates and he keeps them to himself. He does not ridicule nor speak with pleasure of his neighbor's faults or his shortcomings. He does not take up a reproach against his neighbor. If he does hear something of one's shortcomings, of someone's failure, he will pray for him. He does not make it part of his conversation. If he hears of it, he endeavors to disprove it, if all possible. And if not, he does not speak of it ever again. He does not take up a reproach against his neighbor. Characteristic of a saint. Now I don't believe, I don't believe you go so far as that you, you cause the Bible teach, uh, teaches to um, even to separate. 1 Corinthians 5 tells us to separate if a brother be called a fornicator, railer, to, have, uh, to put that wicked one from among you. But he's not, he does not glee over it. He very hates it. And he wants the best for the, even the, the one that has fallen. And wants to build them back up, to bring them back. And that's what they did. That man in 1 Corinthians that was caught in fornication. If you read 2 Corinthians, Paul tells them to bring that person back in. To forgive. To whom you forgive, I forgive, the apostle Paul says. You that are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of meekness, considering thyself. This is an attitude. This is the heart of a saint. He does not take up a reproach against his neighbor. He does not glee over it. He frowns upon backbiting tongue. Proverbs 25, 23 says, the north wind driveth away rain, so doth an angry countenance, a backbiting tongue. He does not accept the, the words of a bitter tongue. He does not take up a reproach against his neighbor. This is a characteristics of saints. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor taketh evil, nor doth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up reproach against his neighbor. And verse four, in whose eyes a vile person is contempted. This is why I believe you get into, you don't go so far that you don't, uh, you, you have to, Obey the scriptures. Remove such a one, that wicked one from among you. In whose eyes a vile person is contented. He does despise wickedness. He does despise the wicked. They have no time for God. They have no time for the word of God. They laugh you to scorn. I typify it. The world. As far as I can say. Despises the wicked. Who are vile. And even, even Christians, even churches become vile, become wicked. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me. I, I, I said it a long time ago, years and years ago, back when I was in Bible Institute, the first sin, the first sin that men commit is they forsake the Almighty God. They forsake him in his heart. They turn away from the Lord. My people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me in the fountain of living waters and hooed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can not, that can hold no water. The world, people, even sometimes saints, would choose the wrong direction that make bad choices 
they choose to go into sin and they reap it be not deceived God is not mocked for when man soweth that shall he also reap he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting but he that soweth to the flesh he that soweth to the flesh oh, sorry about that my memory Galatians be not deceived God is not mocked for whatsoever man soweth that shall he also reap for he that soweth to his flesh shall the flesh reap corruption but he that soweth to the spirit shall the spirit reap life everlasting hallelujah what joy what blessing it is when you're right with God when in the spirit of the Lord what a great place the local church is to be Isaiah 32 6 says, for the vile person will speak villainy and his heart will work iniquity to practice hypocrisy and to utter error against the Lord these are the wicked to make empty the soul of the hungry and he will cause a drink of the thirsty to fail this is even some churches so-called churches just just vile they are vile due to the wicked practices that they have and the true saint, they're not saints. The true saint abhors it. The Lord himself and the saints abhor the wicked who are vile. In whose eyes a vile person is contempted. But he honoreth them that fear the Lord. Yes, he honoreth them that fear the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The saints of the Lord loves good men. He loves good, honest men that fear the Almighty God. Men of piety. Men of sincerity. Men of honesty. And men of good report. These are the types of men saints want to be around. Report of a good name rather than of wealth. Doesn't care about the, how rich someone is and so on and so forth in this world's riches. But rather is more chosen to have a good name, a good reputation. One that feareth the almighty God. He seeks and desires the friendship and fellowship and the conversation of those who fear the Lord. He seeks out men of piety. He seeks out men of honesty and sincerity that want to, to go into the house of God with joy. Amen. What a blessing. He rejoices with them when they are blessed and promoted. But yet he sorrows with them when ill betides them. When something bad happens to his neighbor, he feels the sorrow. He feels the, the pain. It goes along with the scriptures. Romans chapter 12, verse 15. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and re weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Wow. What a blessing. What a blessing. He honoreth them that fear the Lord. He honoreth them that fear the Lord. Verse 15, the last part, he that sweareth to his own hurt. Or chapter 15, uh, chapter 15 uh, verse 4, the next part, he that sweareth to his own hurt. The saint will accept losses to himself and to his family. Rather to uh, see someone else damaged. The saint will accept losses to himself. The others would prosper. The others would come to Christ. He puts himself expenditures himself whatever it takes that's why work days are important that's why going to visitation is important it takes your time and energy sometimes your finances whatever it amounts to nothing 
as long as Christ is glorified and his word is brought out. Proverbs 15, 23, a man hath joy by the answer of his mouth and a word spoken in due season, how good is it? Proverbs 13, 7, there is that maketh himself, there is that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. There is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. Yes, glory to God. Because he's rich toward God. He that sweareth to his own heart hurt. Character of a saint. He that sweareth to his own hurt. He'd rather see damage to himself. The others would prosper. The others would come to Christ. He hath dispersed, Psalms 112 verse 9. He hath dispersed, he hath given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. Hallelujah. The whole Psalms 112 is a chapter of promises. He that sweareth to his own hurt and changes not. He changes not. The saint, once he has spoken, will not go back on his word. His yea will be yea and his nay will be yea, uh, nay. He repents only once. The Lord has worked on his heart to do what is right by his word. His conviction, when the Lord worked in the heart, he changes only. After prayer and much study, if he is to change. Because there's things that God works on men's hearts. He changes not the saint. The Bible says meddle not with him that giveth himself to change. Also, someone that's prone to do so. so uh, verse 5. He that putteth not out his money to usury. He's not greedy of gain. The saint is not greedy of gain. As I said, you can read Psalms 112. 1 through 10, the whole chapter. He will endure as a law, he will endure a loss before before harming another. He wishes for the prosperity of others before himself. Nor taketh uh, he that uh, put not as money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent. Reminds me of those that perform abortions. They're getting their gain by wickedness. The saint does not do this nor taketh reward against the innocent. He honoreth righteous causes that are honest and true and not to himself. Galatians 6, 10, as we have therefore opportunity to let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. And the last uh, part, he that doeth these things shall never be moved. Hallelujah. As the mount of Zion is unmovable, so shall the saint of God that is resting, trusting constantly, relying upon the Almighty who changes not. We are troubled on every side, yet not in distress. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Yes, glory to God. That Christ through be seen and glorified innocent through us. For we which live are always delivered unto the death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Wow. The mighty word of God. In light of all these things of a characteristics of a saint, he will consciously examine himself. Examine yourselves whether you be in the faith, whether you accept you be reprobate, the Bible says in first, uh, Second Corinthians 13, 5. Examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not, not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you. Yes, glory to God, except you be reprobate. Characteristics of a saint. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank thee for thy word. Help us, O oh Lord, ever to live up to thy word. 
so many shortcomings, so many failures, Lord, forgive us. Bless us, this church, and strengthen it. Rebuke the evil. Bless the preaching of thy word today. We're to go forth with power and convict of sin, righteousness, and judgment, and we give thee the glory. In Jesus Christ's name I pray, amen.